was set, the guy was an angel, and I quite liked it from the beginning because it's quite a proper theme and the idea that to make small sculptures rather than big enormous ones really kind of uh, appealed to me. I tried to give them a kind of contemporary twist rather than just copying what's there. So what I did with the gargoyles, I wanted to incorporate objects in which I found or elements of the streets where they're actually sitting to basically reflect on the history of the street or the use of the building. Uh, things I found around on the roads, so all that went into it. For the um, angels to make them more contemporary, I thought about the wings, which uh, is obviously a unique thing for an angel, but how do you kind of interpret a modern angel? All angels are usually kind of with long cloaks and kind of the big feather wings. So I thought maybe look at our technology nowadays and look at the end. They all got a unique take on that, but again they reflected very much the use of the building or the use of the street traditionally. So like the one which we cast there today, she's going into a shopping center, in front of a shopping center, so she has a shopping bag carrying around. So I, I hope also to to enlighten the whole town a little bit kind of. It's they are slightly satirical. The gargoyles are not frightening, they are comical in their own way. So I hope to make people laugh when they see them and uh, or at least smile. When I first came over to Armagh, when, when, I, when, I, when I read the brief, I was very taken with the town, the build quality um, of the Georgian buildings. Um, I also liked the fact that the buildings were, the main buildings seemed to be on hills. Um, um, coupled with the ideas of the, the long-standing observatory, um, it seemed to me that the, the sort of the idea was the, the sky meeting the ground and the ground meeting the sky. And I wanted almost like a shaft of light coming from the sky or something growing. Um, and um, to make something that is sculpture and in a sense poetry about Armagh um, is quite difficult in, in an abstract way. And you, you have to research an awful lot and get the feel of the place to, um, to arrive at a successful um, I'm hoping that people will recognise it as being about Armar. You know, um, it's a simple abstract form that is about the the earth meeting the sky and the sky meeting the earth. Um, but it's it's all about Armagh, really, for me, and um, I'm hoping that people will see that. Armagh had, uh, had wanted to commission a piece of work for this site. They, the, the theme set for the site was myths and legends because for this side of Armagh and the relationship with Navan Fort or what was known as Ewan Macha. And um, so I done some research into the stories of Ewan Macha and the seats of the Kings of Ulster. And obviously the Cúhullin legend was is, are, is most famous as, as far as the Cúhullin legend. He had um, fallen in love with a woman called Emer. His, her father had contrived to send him away. He didn't want Emer to have anything to do with him. And basically, Cúhullin went to Scotland and then to the Isle of Skye to train under a famous female Scottish warrior called Skeppa. Part of his training was to learn how to balance on the butt of a spear or the rim of a shield. And so I picked up on this. I like the idea of this was a part of an exercise of discipline of trying to be at one with the world around you. It didn't involve running around waving swords and spears. It actually involved learning self-discipline. 
I would really like the people of Armagh to feel a real sense of ownership because it is for Armagh, it's about Armagh, it's about history and legend and I think if people sort of take it to heart, take the peace, peace to their heart and feel the real sense of like being part of something and a real sense of ownership, that's what I would like to see. brief behind the piece was to look at the history of the Armagh markets and fair days. So in this case it was I had to go and do some research in local libraries and um, look at books and archive photographs of the old markets from the city. Um, the next stage is I would do a lot of drawings um, of, of sections of the piece. So in this case uh, there would be sort of drawings of horses, drawings of ducks, drawings of chickens and turkeys and, and details like that at first. The process takes a long time between design and completion so I generally try and uh, put into the pieces sort of things that would amuse me and um, hopefully amuse other people so a lot of the wee details are taken off sort of um, animals that I know personally or people that I know personally as well as trying to sort of, a, I suppose that might actually bring a sort of human aspect to the piece. And I decided, no, I really wanted the animal heads and I really enjoyed doing them. And then it was actually Kathy over there who said, do you know those are exactly what the Armagh Rhymers look like? So there you go. It had to be and it was meant to be. So thanks very much, guys. Um, well, I would hope that this piece would be um, engaging in terms of like maybe reminding um, people who are from Armagh of the, the history of the city, um, its history as a market town. If it sort of has a bit of humour and humanity to, to the place then that would be great. Um, if, if people sort of recognise characters of their own in the piece, um, illustrated in some of these animals and some of these figures then that would be brilliant as well. There's lots of different influences uh, in the whole artwork, but the general rule of thumb in the whole piece has been the looking at the history of astronomy and the history of astronomy in relation to Armagh, with the observatory here in the Armagh being one of the longest running observatories in the UK. Every artist, you know, part of our work is that we hope people like what we do. It's, it's like if you're a sportsman, you hope you're good enough, or if you're an actor, that people can identify with what you're doing. And it's the same as an artist. You want anybody who's working in the public sphere to try and make public art. They want to be, they want their work to be supported and liked. Everyone. I would hope that people can, can relate to it, enjoy it, and spend time with it, and maybe it gives them things over time that they maybe don't see everything that they come back and there's something else they find out. So I hope there's a, a little, it gives out something over time to people. I think about this piece here in 200 years. I think of this piece possibly even here in 500 years. 